Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you're all having a wonderful day or night. I hope you will enjoy today's video, so let's just get into it. How many of you have saved somebody's reputation by not telling your side of the story? None of us. We tell the truth over here, not our side of the story. See, I don't even like funny guys. Yeah, I really like funny guys. I like someone that's going to make me laugh. I like someone that's going to make... We don't want no clown. No, we want... I want okay. someone that's going to keep me entertained. I don't want to sit opposite you and get, like, start yawning. I'm the entertainer. I will entertain both of us. I do not like funny guys. I like guys that are quite serious. Like, you know, imagine a guy... Like, imagine me being with a man that's, like, clowning around, like... <laughs> no. I want my guy serious. Like, no. very serious. No, not that's me. That's just my type. No. Don't make no jokes. I'll make the jokes. <laughs> you just be serious. All right, great. You do you. But you do understand jokes need to be funny, right? For example, I took everything you've just said as a joke. Still not funny, though. I'm going to tell you guys how I manifested my dream life. And if you're one of those people who don't believe in manifestation, that's funny. I wonder how your life's going. And if your life's good, it's probably because you're really good at manifestation and you don't even know it. No, it's because I don't sit around in my bed in the middle of the day hoping the universe will put money in my bank account. In case you were wondering how did she do it, she's faking confidence and she's delusional. You don't believe me? There you go. Um, the biggest thing was I learned that confidence is key. Like, once I started to truly love myself for everything that I am, I love myself my worst days. Like, that was a huge shift for me. Honestly, fake it until you make it. Like, if you act confident, somebody is going to look at you and almost worship you in a way. Next, I feel like the biggest thing for me was actually living in a delusional mindset. I really am sorry for interrupting the video, but I can't listen to two minutes of this. But brace yourself, she's gonna tell you exactly why you should listen to her. I'm making way more money than most people my age. I'm literally, like, in my dream living situation. I travel all the time and I don't leave my house. So in 2023, traveling means going to the bathroom. Men do everything to impress a woman. End of story. They Correct. work yeah. to impress a woman. They work to provide for a woman. They wear what they wear to impress a woman. They drive what they drive to impress a woman. Every single thing a man does impresses a woman. That's why we have things in history like Aphrodite and muses. What if women didn't exist? What would men do? We'd just hang out. We'd just hang out. Play sports. Absolutely. This is what men do when they're comfortable in relationships, too. They no longer have to attract a woman, so they play Fortnite. <laughs> it's true. What is it though? Were you ever approached by a man wearing cargo pants? I'm pretty sure he didn't put on those pants to impress you. Did every man who owns a Bentley bought it because he wanted to impress a woman or did he bought that because it provides him with a certain status? Did a lunatic with a 2003 Ford drive the engine to impress a woman? I can promise you he didn't. But I can take your argument and run with it if you care to explain why you run a social media account. What happened if you didn't exist? Well, we would pretty much live the same lives we do and until we grow old and pass away. Some men do do those things to impress a woman, but I think they make the exception, not the rule. What do you guys think? Help me out. So why did my man immediately go to a best friend's to lover story? Hear me out. She likes to work out really late at night. He doesn't like her going alone, so he goes with her. Now this one night, she's like, hey, I'm just gonna run on the treadmill. Feel free to go lift. And he's like, oh, I'll run with you. And she's like, you hate cardio. Why would you do this? He's like, it's fine. And she's like, okay. So she goes to step on the treadmill, forgetting that she already starts it, and almost falls flat on her face until he jumps off of his, stops her treadmill, and picks her up. Now she's laughing hysterically. She's like, oh my god. And he looks at her and he goes, that's why. And she goes, that's why what? And he goes, that's why I wanted to run next to you so I could catch you if you fell. And she's just like, oh my God. And he leans in super close and he goes, I will always catch you if you fall. And she looks up at him. She's like, Kim? And he like lightly dusts his lips over hers. And she's like, what was that? And he goes, go finish your workout and we'll talk about it later tonight. And then he winks. <laughs> And this is how romantic comedies ruined your brain if you needed another proof. Maybe switch to sci-fi or even cartoons from time to time. Men are seriously out here wondering why women are so tired of dating. Here's why. Match with this guy on Bumble earlier this week. Conversation's going great. We're talking about things that we've healed from, things we're looking for in relationships, things we have in common. So the time comes for him to ask me on a date, and I say yes. Let me add, in the meantime, 
this man asked me my first date rules. One of them being, we meet in public. So flash forward to today, date day, he sends me a text that says, send me your address, I'll pick you up at 8.30. To which I of course respond, I would feel better if we met at the restaurant. To which I get this. Ready? I'm going to be honest here, Kelsey. It's a red flag for me if a woman is this afraid. I understand needing to be cautious and safe on a dating app, but I definitely feel as though I have presented myself as a gentleman and not a creep. So it kind of does show me a level of trust issues and not being able to let things go. So with that, I think I'd like to forego our date. I sincerely hope you find what you're looking for because you are a great person. To which I respond with this. Respectfully, we're still messaging on the app. We haven't exchanged numbers. We haven't video chatted. Women have literally been mm, in situations like this, even when men present themselves as gentlemen. I do not know a single woman who has allowed themselves to be picked up by a man they have never met without those things happening first. Wanting to meet there had absolutely nothing to do with trust and everything to do with safety. It's too bad that that's not something that can be respected. And I'm the red flag. You all wonder why we're tired. Do better. Yes, you are, at least for him. And no, he doesn't need to do better. And no, not even for a second did I ask myself why are women tired of dating. Considering your own safety is one thing, living with a victim mentality is a completely different thing. He didn't ask for your phone number and you didn't ask for his. What stopped you? And if he was one of those bad guys, you meeting him in public, it's not gonna make a difference. If you're so concerned for your safety, ask for his full name, his phone number. You can find him online at any time because you can find everything online these days make sure he is who he says he is and before you even agree to go on a date with him let him know from before that all your friends and your family knows who you're gonna go out with and if you still feel like you don't know him well enough to trust him then don't agree to go on a date with him at least not until you do i know i've gained a bit of weight but i'm back on my carnival waves now and you're going to see me. I'm going to be switching these kebabs for abs, okay? So just give me, give me a week. No, hell no. Absolutely not. I bet, oh, don't look at my boxes. Back to the regular scheduled program. I've been getting too much attention from men lately. So I'm dyeing my hair tomorrow. A color that will make the men all go bye, 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 skedaddle. Stay tuned. I'm gonna guess blue, but I think you're worrying too much. Men do all kind of crazy, and even with blue hair or not, they'll still do you. Not to mention just one click and the lights go off, and they'll be long gone before the lights come back on. It's literally so chic to have an ex-husband, like... Uh, could be you. But like, I don't want it to be. Like, I do wish I just had, like, had married someone before Ben. Like, some loser. First. Because I don't want to divorce Ben. I love Ben. But, like, I kind of want an ex-husband. Like, it's kind of like a Birkin. Like, it's a fabulous accessory. Do you know what you could do, which could even be more fabulous, if you divorce Ben and then remarry him? It's, like, very Elizabeth But Taylor. I'm not a divorcee, then. I yearn for, like, a sexy, mysterious past. And then, like, I'm in France, like, you know, on vacation. And I run into my ex-husband. I could just, you know turn to my Parisian friends when they ask who that is I say it's my ex-husband you know but I just feel like there are actually a lot of people perhaps listening to the show who are divorced and it's like they feel like it's a scarlet letter and I'm here to tell you like it's fabulous it's fabulous it's chic I don't know why like when I think of like my ex-husband like I think of like skinny girls chain smoking cigarettes with big Birkin bags that like they beat up because they have so many Birkin bags they don't need to like treat them well yeah and when you say it like that instead of talking about like your ex be like my ex-husband yeah like oh who's that over there oh that's my ex-husband and his new wife yeah just say it like that it changes everything and, like life is all about perspective so you could either see an ex-husband as like this mistake or regret or you could see it as this accessory and I'm telling you if you look at divorce as like an accessory and just kind of like a fun fact on the, the resume of your life, I don't think you'll regret it. That's beautiful, Claudia. Yes, thank you. I would give Ben just one more year. And just in case Ben was listening to his wife on this podcast, you better start hiding some money. You're about to be taken for everything you've got. At least now we know why so many women file for divorce. It's chic to have an ex-husband. Do you believe in dinosaurs? Like, do you think dinosaurs were real and existed? Or do you think they were methodical creatures? I don't know. 
I like part of me likes to think that there was, but part of me likes to also not think that there was because it freaks me out. Tyrannosaurus Rexes were the ones that flew, right? No. <laughs> Tyrannosaurus Rex are the massive ones with the little hands, right? That's yeah. a T-Rex. T- oh, t- um, pterodactyl. Pterodactyl. Yeah. And then what? They all just went extinct? Cool. The meteor. Got them all? Got them all. But dinosaurs don't have, If you're a reptile, you don't have to have s- to reproduce. You just lay eggs. No, you do have s- Oh, how, right? how, how would that... Um, it's like a penguin, right? They lay eggs. They went extinct because they stopped reproducing, but I guess there was a meteor. I didn't know that part. You didn't? Wait, no. Alex. Are Did you, you serious? Yes, that's like basic third grade history. I've never heard that. The Big Bang? No, not the Big Bang. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I thought the Big Bang was the meteor that. No, the, the Big Bang is the creation of the universe. Oh. Okay then. I'm. Uh, I'm gonna go drink now.